live from San Jose, it's theCUBE. Presenting Big Data Silicon Valley. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE, our continuing coverage of our event, Big Data SV. I'm Lisa Martin with my co-host George Gilbert. We're down the street from the Strata Data Conference hearing a lot of um, interesting insights on big data, peeling back the layers, looking at opportunities, some of the challenges, barriers to overcome, but also the uh, plethora of opportunities that enterprises alike have uh, that they can take advantage of. Our next guest is no a stranger to theCUBE. She was just on with me a couple days ago at the Women in Data Science Conference. Please welcome back to theCUBE, Zia Ma, the Vice President of Software and Services Group and the Director of Big Data Technologies from Intel. Hi, Zia. Hey, hi, Lisa. Long time no see. I know, it and was just three, two to three days it ago. It was, well, now I can say happy International Women's Day. The same to you, Lisa. Thank you, it's great to have you here. So, I mentioned we are down the street from the Strata Data Conference. You've been up there um, over the last couple of days. What are some of the things that you're hearing with respect to big data? Um, trends, barriers, opportunities? Yeah, so first it's very exciting to be back at the conference again. Uh, the one uh, biggest trend or the one uh, topic that's hit really hard by ma many presenters is the, the power of bringing the big data ecosystem and the data science uh, uh, solutions uh, together. You know, that's, you, we're definitely we're seeing in the last uh, few years, the advancement of big data and the advancement of data science or you know, machine learning, deep learning, really pushing forward uh, uh, business differentiation and improve uh, our life quality. So that's definitely one of the biggest trends. Um, another thing I noticed is that there are a lot of discussion on um, a big data and a data science getting deployed into the cloud. What are the learnings? What are the use cases? So I think that's another uh, noticeable trend. And also there were some uh, presentations on uh, uh, you know, uh, doing the, 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 the data science or uh, uh, having the, the business intelligence on the edge devices. That's another noticeable trend. And of course, there are discussions on security, privacy uh, for data science and, and big data. So that continue to be one of the, the topics. So um, there's, we were talking earlier because there's so many concepts and, and, comp and, and products to get, to get your arms around. Like if someone is looking at um, AI and machine learning on the back end, um, you know, we'll, we'll worry about edge intelligence some other time, but we know that, you know, Intel has the CPU with the, the Xeon and then there's the low power one with Atom, and there's, there's the, um, the GPU, there's A6, A FPGAs, and then there are the software layers, um, you know, with higher abstraction layer, um, higher abstraction m level. Help us put some of those pieces together for people who are like saying, okay, I know I've got a lot of data, I've got to train these sophisticated models, you know, explain this to me. Right, so, um, you know, uh, Intel uh, is a, a real solution provider for uh, data science and, uh, and big data. So at the hardware level, uh, George, as you mentioned, we offer a wide range of products uh, from um, general purpose like Xeon to targeted silicon such as FPGA, Nirvana, and other you know, ASICs chips like uh, uh, Nirvana. And also we provide adjacencies uh, like networking um, hardware, um, non-volatile memory, and mobile. Uh, you know, those are the, the, the other JSON products that we offer. Now on top of the, the hardware layer, uh, we uh, deliver fully optimized the software solution stack from you know, libraries, frameworks, to tools and solutions, uh, you know, uh, so that we can help engineers or developers to create uh, AI solutions with great ease and productivity. You know, for instance, we deliver Intel optimized math kernel library that leverage our, the latest instruction set, give us significant performance boost when you are running your software on Intel hardware. We also deliver um, like framework like a big deal and for Spark and a big data type of customers if they are looking for deep learning capabilities. Um, we also optimize the, um, you know, some popular open source uh, deep learning frameworks uh, like Cafe, like TensorFlow, MXNet, um, and, and a few others. So our goal is to provide all the necessary solutions so that at the end, our customers can create the application, the solution that they really need to address their biggest pain points. 
Help us think about the maturity level now. Like, we know that um, the very most sophisticated, you know, internet service providers were sort of all over this machine learning now for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. um, banks, insurance companies, people who've had the statisticians and actuaries and um, who have that sort of skill set are, you know, beginning to deploy some of these early production apps. Where are we in terms of getting this out to the mainstream? What, what, what are some of the things that has to happen? Uh, to get it to mainstream, oh, there are so uh, many things we could do. Yeah. Uh, first, I think the, um, we will continue to see the wide range of uh, silicon products, but then there are a few things um, uh, Intel is pushing. For example, we're developing this uh, Nirvana graph compiler that will encapsulate uh, the hardware integration details and present a consistent API for developers to, to work with. And you know, this is one thing that we can help, we hope that we can eventually help the developer community with. Um, and, uh, any, and also we are collaborating with uh, the, the end user, like from the enterprise uh, segment. Uh, for example, we're working with the financial services industry, we're working with the uh, manufacturing sector, and also uh, 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 customers from the, the medical field. Um, and uh, um, uh, online retailer uh, trying to help them to uh, deliver uh, the or create the, the data science and analytics solutions on Intel-based uh, uh, hardware or Intel-optimized uh, uh, software. So that's another thing that we do, and we, we're seeing actually very good progress in this area. Now, we're also collaborating with uh, many cloud service providers, for instance, um, uh, we work with, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, some of the top Super 7 cloud service providers, both in the U.S. and also in China, to democratize uh, the, not only our hardware, but also, you know, our libraries and tools, uh, Big DL, MKL, and other frameworks and libraries, so that our customers, uh, including individuals and businesses, can l easily access to those building blocks uh, from, the, from the cloud. Okay. So definitely we're right, working from uh, different vectors. So last question in the last couple of minutes. Let's kind of vibe on this collaboration theme. Tell us a little bit about the collaboration that you're having with, you mentioned customers and in, in some, some highly regulated industries for, as an example, but I'd love to understand what's that symbiosis? What is Intel learning from your customers that's driving Intel's innovation of your technologies and big data? Um, that's an excellent uh, question. So Lisa, maybe I can start by sharing a couple of uh, customer use cases. What kind of solution that we help our customer to address. Uh, I think it's always wise not to uh, start a conversation with the customer uh, uh, on technology that you deliver. You want to understand the customer's needs first. Um, and then so that you can provide a solution that really address their pa biggest pain point rather than simply selling a technology. Um, so for example, we have worked with uh, on online retailer uh, to better understand their uh, customers' shopping behavior and to assess their customers' uh, preferences and interests. And based upon that analysis, the online retailer make different product recommendations uh, and maximize its customers' purchase potential and drive up the retailer's sales. You know, that's one uh, type of use case that we have worked. We also have a partner with uh, um, the, um, the, the, the customers from the medical field. Actually, we, today at the Strata uh, the conference, we actually had uh, somebody highlighting, we had a, a joint presentation with the UCSF where we helped the, um, the, 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 the medical center to um, aut automate the diagnosis and grading of um, uh, meniscus lesion. And so today, actually, that's all done manually by uh, the radiologist. But now that entire process is automated, the result is much more accurate, much more consistent, um, and much more timely, because you don't have to wait for the availability of a radiologist to read all the 3D MRI uh, images. And that can all be done by machines. You know, so those, these are the area that we work with our customers, understand their business need, and give them the solution they're looking for. Wow, the impact there. I wish we had more time to dive into some of those examples, but we thank you so much, Zia, for stopping by twice in one week to theCUBE and, and sharing your insights, and we look forward to having you back on the show in the near future. Thanks, thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Georgia, for having me. And for my co-host, 
George Gilbert, I'm Lisa Martin. We are live at Big Data SB in San Jose. Come down, join us for the, the rest of the afternoon. We're at this cool place called Forager Tasting and Eatery. We will be right back with our next guest after a short break.